everybody, this is Becky Legiro for CoinGeek.com here with Dr. Owen Vaughn in Berlin at the IEEE Coins event. We're here to talk about the intersection of AI and blockchain and other really exciting technologies. And Owen, thank you kindly for the invite. I know you had quite a bit to do with the organization of this event and the agenda. Tell me how you got involved and what the main purpose is of this event here in Berlin. Yeah, well, um, this event is being co-organized by me and a few of my colleagues at Enchain. We felt that this conference was a really good one for us because it's the, the intersection of several emerging technologies. So they have a focus on blockchain, AI, IoT, IPv6, and how all of those different technologies talk to each other. It's called Coins, but it's nothing to do with blockchain tokens. It's a conference on omni-layer intelligence systems. So it's been a really productive day. Oh, it's been a really interesting day, Owen, and I think one of the highlights for me was for sure the panel that was that you hosted this morning, and I really enjoyed hearing Zem. I think that he is such a philosophical mind. I know you and you and I were chatting about how the idea of, of Bitcoin and money can be sort of compared to AI and consciousness, yes. and it's really just one of those things you have to just sit and think about. Yeah. I just wonder if you could elaborate on, on what's going on in your mind about, about the, the connection there. Well, we, yeah, we were really, uh, you and I were discussing how the, the, these two um, great leaps in uh, computer science at the moment. There's blockchain and AI. And they're, they're somehow uh, an analogy with how we're perceiving them and the questions, the fundamental questions they introduce. So it, it, in the early days of Bitcoin and blockchain, it had these um, negative associations with cryptocurrency trading and you know dark web purchases. Still and exist today. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it's hard to shake them. And similarly with AI, it now has a bad reputation for you know stealing people's ideas, generating artwork based on someone else's uh, creative style. Um, but also, it's, it's why these technologies are so interesting to study, is they cause us to ask fundamental questions to ourselves that I never thought I would I would think about. Things like, what is money? You know, that's a, it's such a complex, quite an interesting question that Bitcoin's really causing us to ask ourselves. And with AI, the question is, what is consciousness? What is it to be human? And we were trying to get to the the, the point where distinguishing between a temporal limitation of AI, so if computer power just gets better, how far can it go, versus fundamental barriers. And um, Jem is quite clear for him. Consciousness is what he would call a, a, a fundamental ontology. It's just something we have to uh, assume and we're never gonna be able to, to challenge. So for him, it doesn't matter how much computer power we have. It's just that the AI will never replace human consciousness. And he comes at it from more of a, um, a philosophical and spiritual angle. And that seems to be the right type of language to use in this case. So yeah, it's very interesting for me to, to see that coming up in you know, uh, quite a, a hard science conference like this one. Yeah, super, super interesting. So much to think about. And and there's one area I wanted to ask your opinion on here. I know that there are some people saying that the hype around surrounding blockchain has kind of died down and now it's shifted to AI. Yeah. So from your perspective, I mean, obviously you don't think blockchain is dead because that's what you work on. But no. what would you say to somebody that looks at it that way, that thinks that there's been a complete shift? Well, I think it's probably correct that the, the hype has shifted from blockchain to AI. You can see um, you can see particularly the, the younger generation doing that as well. I mean, I know personally some people who were uh, fanatics in uh, blockchain and now they're becoming fanatics in AI. Uh, they're kind of the, the older generation don't really understand or want to, to do with either of them. Um, but I would, I, I think what characterizes both technologies is that they're not going anywhere. It's just a question of how much um, they're adopted. So. Yeah, I think some people will be interested in learning about both, but at Enchain we remain focused on blockchain, but we're also becoming very interested in AI. We're not gonna be the AI experts, you know, we're not gonna be the ones challenging, um, creating new AI algorithms, but we're gonna be the ones to explain how that's relevant for blockchain and how blockchain can be relevant for AI. So I think, you know, if you can uh, become interested and upskill yourself in both technologies, you're in a very good position. Yeah, and that's kind of the goal I personally hope to get out of this conference is, is to learn more about AI, about IoT, um, and how we can be part of the conversation. So great, no, CoinGeek, we have lots of articles about AI. It's really, really, really interesting. Maybe it's good that the hype is shifted to somewhere else. We don't want hype, we want actual serious people focusing on building, right? Yeah, well, I think a lot of the hype in blockchain unfortunately surrounded um, use cases that we don't think are particularly good for society, like cryptocurrency trading. I think we still haven't had the hype around 
some really fundamental uh, use cases that are positive for society, you know, like using it as information layer to, to have more control over our own personal data, for example. For sure. Well, Owen, thank you so much for inviting us here, first of all, and for doing such a great job with the organization of the event. Looking forward to the meetup as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. Here with Latif Ladid in Berlin at IEEE Coins. Latif has been the keynote speaker today, and we have a beautiful plaque to prove it. Show us your plaque, Latif. Yes, wonderful. Look at that beautiful thing there. So tell me what your involvement has been with uh, this IEEE conference. Well, basically, we want to uh, promote uh, the end-to-end -end model of uh, blockchain to a lot of people that have proposed papers on uh, blockchain, uh, but they don't understand the uh, network layer, so they just put it on top without understanding how it functions. So, so blockchain is a rare uh, application that uh, relies on the end-to-end -end model, uh, that you have to have um, uh, routable IP addresses, in this case public IP addresses, to all the nodes. The next thing is to give each uh, person its own IP address so we'll be able to do peer-to-peer -peer with each other which is not currently possible. So it's basically we're moving from enslaving people to empowering them to become free on the internet and I think blockchain is one of these rare uh, applications. We used to have Napster and, and BitTorrent and the kind of uh, file transfer that used the end-to-end -end model. But this is the, you know, the biggest one ever. And I think there's a, a big chance of getting a lot of people to endorse, especially BSV, which is focusing on, on this topic. I remember Napster. Maybe I shouldn't admit that, but I remember that. I know in your present... Yeah, way too young. In your, in your keynote today, you were talking about working towards a new internet. And I know that this covers some of the points you just brought up, but can you just define to our audience here what you mean by new internet? Yeah, so when we have defined the uh, IPv6 standard back in 98, so we had the internet and the new IPv6 standard called new IPv6, and we just used new and made uh, and put it to uh, internet. So the current internet is using IPv4, and IPv4 is still a research protocol. So with the new internet, we're using a production protocol that has verified what happened with IPv4, what are, what are the things that uh, we're missing, and how uh, IPv6 enhances dramatically many features. And some of them are uh, absolutely amazing uh, to give especially everyone multi millions of IP addresses and to empower each one, similar to the phone, you, know, you have your phone number, you have multiple uh, phone numbers at home, but you don't have your own IP address, which means that your, you, your IP address belong to somebody else which is the ISP or so, so we want that basically uh, the internet was designed uh, exactly the same way like the post, uh, post office so, so you have to have your uh, IP uh, in this case address and that's why it's called IP address because it's like the postal system so, so that, that kind of uh, new internet empowering people to be actively working on the internet and talking to each other directly like you do on the phone you can do many transactions, many new applications that use, especially uh, for many use cases like supply chain. So we have that all, in all kind of manufacturing environments, so in the car industry, in the assembly lines, in uh, you know, in the food industry, and so forth. That, that will be a magic uh, type of new applications that are really needed uh, for the the food currently, which is very expensive. Uh, because uh, the, the manufacturer, in this case the farmer, is not getting more money and the end user is paying more money, so where is the money going to? So in between, something is not working, so we have kind of Ponzi scheme between you know, the farmer and the end user, so we, we can cut that out so that the money goes really to the farmer and the end user should get the, the right price for it. So, so, so this blockchain will create this end-to-end -end transparency and end-to-end -end traceability and so on and so forth, which is fundamental. And today it's not transparent. So nobody can verify who's doing what and so on. Although the regulation is, is there, but you need the tools in order to, to do these things. So I think blockchain is going to be a very good tool for these things. Huh? Very, very good. And I know you and I have been chatting about how it's important to educate in events like this is exactly where it needs to begin. Tell me, who is here today? Who is here at IEEE Coins and, and why is education at this level so important? 
It's quite, quite important for, so we have to look for, let's say, already dedicated people for blockchain. So there are not many conferences doing this. So that's why we're selecting these places where people have done some homework, you know, to understand what we're talking about. And they will also uh, take our uh, knowledge and carry it on and enhance their blockchain uh, knowledge. If you go to any other big conference and so on, they won't even listen because they are not focused on this thing. This is what we have done with IPv6 at the beginning. So we went to the core team and then we have grown this over the years. And this will happen the same way for blockchain. So here there were about 214, uh, 15 papers submitted, of which they have selected just 62, which, which is a very uh, stiff uh, selection uh, system. And two of them uh, from Enchain, which is quite, uh, quite amazing. And on top of that, uh, we have a blockchain industrial uh, session, uh, which is uh, moderated and chaired by Owen. So they had a very cool discussion, demystifying blockchain and AI and setting a very cool picture, the roadmap for these things without falling into these extremes that we see today. Yeah. So blockchain has to be purified as such. It is good for mankind. It's not uh, you know, as it is now forked into an ugly thing like uh, cryptocurrencies and so <laughs> forth. That's, that's some nonsense, uh, yeah. which is rather killing the poor guys that are believing in these lies and, and they put their money and lose it the same day. Mm. And AI is also a new area uh, it is still at, at the beginning, AI exists with us for the last 50 years. But uh, now I think uh, we are getting into a new stage where you can probably use AI for better analytics so that the data uh, you know, are better used and interpreted and so on and so forth. Although there are still some deficiencies uh, like uh, you know, no respect for IPR and no respect for the data that they have collected from some other people. So they have to come out and say you know, how these things are done and it should be also there should be some regulation in this area, like GDPR, you know, compliance and privacy compliance and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, these new technologies are always there. They come with good things and bad things. Yeah. Most of the time, good things win at Very the end. Good. Huh? Very yeah. good. Well, thank you so much for helping us on our mission to educate the world on this fabulous technology. And wonderful to see you, Latif, yeah, as really always. Good job. Mm -hmm. Together with your um, film director. <laughs> Thank you. thank you so much, and thank you guys so much for watching. It's Becky Legiro for CoinGeek.com. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Blockchain 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.